Davis, you did uh, genetics at UC Davis, public health at uh, USC, and right now you kind of just been doing uh, helping corporations with corporate wellness, kind of mm-hmm. helping them uh, kind of put together their um, strategies. Or I mean, most corporations have gyms now. Mm-hmm. Um, they're looking for. Do you feel they're they're kind of going towards? more nutrition and stuff like that? Or what is it typically, yeah. what do they have you well, do? Well, I think like, especially being here in the Bay Area, a lot of companies have jumped on board with wellness and well-being, mm-hmm. especially, you know, like our tech companies. Yes. They, if you look up Standard work what stations. are the top criteria, like what makes successful people successful, I'm sure the one of those top five will be a mindfulness practice, mm-hmm. right? Or having a morning routine. Right. And what that really comes down to is being present and being focused. And what, how do you develop focus? Right. Being focused means that you keep at that one thing, even though there's going to be bright, shiny objects around you all the time. All the time. And More especially so. now, we have all of this, yes. right? That's constantly keeping us distracted. So our attention span is getting lower and lower and lower. And that's where meditation, and I think part of the reason why meditation is really bubbling up to the surface and maybe can seem somewhat like a fad right now because so many people are talking about it, right. but it's here to stay. Right. It's not going to go anywhere. This the crazy is part a, is it's been here. Right? It's been here. Well, it's but been in only, the world, right? Yes. This like intelligence of mindfulness mm-hmm. or meditation um, or any type of, any of these Eastern sciences or ancient sciences, ancient wisdom, it's been here. Mm-hmm. We've just, in our Western world, been really focused on us being the intellectuals and Mm -hmm. creating, 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 which has been amazing. Like we've developed and advanced so much, Mm -hmm. but almost to the point where we're burning out now. We're overwhelmed. We are exhausted. Over multitasking. We're walking around like zombies. And that's why I think meditation is coming to the forefront as, okay, people just need to slow down and stop and give ourselves permission to slow down right right, right. like that's the, that's the key that's the hard part. being in a country being in a place where work is rewarded and the more hours you work the better it is right i mean people here don't even take their vacations yeah. people don't go on holiday they don't take breaks and it's uh, eventually catching up with us right and that's the you can see yeah I was just at this um, culture summit in San Francisco the last couple of days. It was amazing because there was this new, especially with the millennials, right? Mm-hmm. They're, they have a oh. different perspective. They're perspective, being born into this. This is normal. Well, they're being born into it, but they're also asking more questions. They want more than just those, more than just the salary, mm-hmm. more than just the holiday time, more than just like the perks of a gym membership. Mm-hmm. They want purpose. Right. They want community. They want connection. And most of our corporate institutions haven't done a great job of creating a culture of community and connection. Keyword it's been siloed. Yeah, it's, huge. Yeah. it's like, yeah. okay, let's just keep our heads here. We were saying this yes, earlier. Yes. Stay in the office. Keep your head down. Hire third-party contractors. Work, work, Never work. And when we go to meetings, you sit there and maybe do a round table of, oh, how are you? And everyone's just like, good, good, good. But you're not really good. Right. And no one wants to really answer that question. Right. Because we feel like no one, one, I think we're just not um, aware of how we're feeling anymore. Mm-hmm. We're so caught up in the external world that we haven't slowed down to check in with ourselves to ask, like, how am I feeling? Right. And we feel, almost feel that, you know, it might not be normal for us to be saying those type of things and talking about our feelings, which is actually uh, so important. I always uh, talk about Gary Vee way too much, but it's interesting. He hired uh, for HR. He believes in it so much. He hired a a chief heart officer. Yes, you she was that. at the culture summit. Oh no yeah, way! Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So you're well aware. Remember, if I can guess any question on uh, DM or Black Lives Matter, look up. Uh, number one thing was your naive young little read through. Like, when did it even start to come across uh, as far as yoga, as far as meditation, as far as mindfulness? If you can go back and think of one of the first times, uh, what really got you into that? Because I think that's a valuable question because most people who are like listening, you know, go to that phase on a journey, they don't know what the hell they want to do with their mm-hmm. life, right? And when they come across things, uh, can you remember um, a time that you really began to to learn about this or find interest in something like this? You started with yoga? Yeah. Um, yeah, it started with yoga, but I think also just being that 
having an Indian background, it kind of was yeah. integrated into the culture and into all the rituals and all the, True. you know, festivities and everything that I grew up with. And when I started yoga, I started purely from a physical perspective. I had injured myself and I needed something to do. I was a runner, still mm -hmm. am, but I needed something to do. And I came across this back when I was at Davis and okay. a good friend of mine suggested that I go and take a, a Bikram yoga class. So I did. Back then, it was like five bucks to go to the class, and I went to the <laughs> class. It was really hey, don't blame that inflation. Okay, they got to pay the bills. <laughs> I know um, it's like twenty dollars. And I, it was a great workout, but like something happened, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what. And I, I definitely had one. I know a lot of teachers probably talk about those experiences where they just burst out into tears, and and that really did oh, happen gosh. to me. Like it's I was just like, what the time. hell is going on? And yeah. so I left. And I was like, that was weird, but I still wanted to come back. So oh, I was sure. curious enough and I was drawn to come back and I continued to do that. Um, fast forward, mm -hmm. I moved to LA, I was going to grad school. I continued to do yoga. I practiced at Bikram Studio, but I also started exploring other practices of yoga and really mm -hmm. learning about this connection with the breath. Um, I guarantee after the first yoga uh, Bikram class, you were probably just like Googling like, what the hell well, really is this? Well, it wasn't easy. We though. weren't really Googling back then. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> Aging you, myself. <laughs> you were you were using your library card, sorting through with the librarian and checking in to learn more about what this is. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Isn't that days. funny? What did you do before the days of Google? It wasn't Where... even that long ago, too. That's what, that's yeah. what it was. But, um, but just kind of fast forward, like I continued with the practice of yoga. I was studying public health in grad school. I moved to India after that. And I walked into my first, you know, I walked into an institution there to to go to a yoga class. And actually they weren't teaching yoga the way they are now and, and are there. There was no studios where you had this teacher to student type of experience. It was more like yoga as a therapy. Right. And so I ended up doing their teacher training and um, and since then have been teaching yoga uh, and done a number of other trainings. But of course, with yoga came meditation. And for years, I've had this, every training I did, we had to sit and meditate. And it was the hardest thing for me. Mm -hmm. I definitely, you know, I remember the time I was like, all right, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to meditate for 10 minutes. I right. set my timer and then I close my eyes. I'm like, God, I must be like nine minutes in now. And what I am open, I supposed to think about? I'm supposed to think about nothing? How do I think yeah, about and the, nothing? And the thought back then and the way I learned it was to think about nothing. Mm -hmm. And so, the uh, moment her, her, I tell my mind, thing. don't think about anything, what happens? It's like a million about. thoughts yeah. come in. And I remember opening my eyes. I'm like, what the hell? Only two minutes have gone by. Mm -hmm. And I was frustrated. And I'm somewhat of a perfectionist. So it just wasn't oh, happening for me until... Um, I finally one day decided I'm going to dive in. This was in 2009, I think. And I ended up doing a Vipassana. Okay. So a Vipassana is a 10-day silent meditation retreat. Okay. Uh, they have Vipassana centers all over the world. Um, and it's led by, who has now passed away, but Goenkaji. Mm -hmm. And it's in the lineage of the Buddha. And it's really like to see things as they are, and that change is constant. And you had, so you had an amazing narr narrator. You had an amazing teacher who's self-guided meditation, right? Yeah. I think that's the thing is when you know why you're doing what you're doing, it changes the game because when you know the benefits and yeah. this and that. Well, I think more than that, I think when you experience it for yourself. Mm -hmm. So for me, kind of being the scientist at heart, I went to this Vipassana, and mind you, it's 10 days, you're meditating about 10 hours a day, and you're in complete silence. Yeah. And the first three days, I was like, this is, I can do this forever, I'm no problem. Yeah. By like day six, I thought I was checked into an insane <laughs> Like there are, yeah. you'd be surprised how much is buried within you because we rarely take time to process what happens throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And this is back before we had all of the social media channels and even more inputs. This right. was just the regular day-to-day -day inputs that we had. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that gets buried that when you quiet down and you're no longer putting anything in, mm -hmm. stuff begins to bubble up to the surface mm -hmm. and you have to process through it. Right. And you like literally get to experience what it feels like, what change feels like, because there are sensations that occur in your body and you're just staying with it because you know that it's going to pass. Everything passes. Mm -hmm. So you're neither craving anything, nor are you pushing anything away. You're just kind of like, okay, this sensation is there. 
it's pleasant, but I'm not going to want more of it. Or this sensation is there and it's unpleasant, and I'm, but I'm also not going to push it away. And that's what awareness is. It's just kind of having this awareness of... And that translates in life, right? Yeah, because you're always going to have the I peaks and valleys. Yeah, like this too shall pass. This too I, shall I, pass. I don't, I don't remember, can't remember that's from, but uh, there's a king that, that maybe yeah, he wanted to pawn a ring or a tattoo on a ring. It's a constant yeah. reminder that whatever's going on in life, in the moment you're freaking out, right? It's the end of the world, this and that. But if you can uh, see, see and know and understand that, you know what? Chill out. This too yeah. shall pass. And then no matter how bad it is now, that's key. That's well, and that change is constant, right? And so how that translates over into our day-to-day -day life is if you're upset with somebody, just taking that, when we think about meditation now, we kind of think like, oh, you need hours of time and you need to like go to a very quiet place. I mean, we're in a very quiet place right now, but life is noisy and life is messy. And if you're going to wait for life to shut up for you so that you can have a meditation practice, you're going to be waiting a very long time. Right. So the key really is to find those moments like of just taking a deep breath right. or just kind of, you know, telling yourself, okay, I'm going to pause or just giving yourself a minute before you respond to something so that you're not reacting mindlessly out of emotion. We're building self-control in a way. Right? Yeah. But you're responding to someone. And in those, in that moment, you, you're, there's a, a ton of stuff that happens physiologically when you get angered or when you get excited yeah. about anything. And if we just uh, relied on our emotions to guide everything, we're going to be all over the place. So right. there I, is. I think that was key what you just said that right there was uh, uh, cort cortisol. I would think about cortisol and shots, but cortisol is a hormone that's released when it's we our get stress. stressed. Yeah. And I was thinking about that. And we might be, you know, sometimes we frown when we're doing things. I think that we're literally releasing that without even being angry or stressed, as yeah. opposed to we hold a smile even when we're not even happy, but force ourselves for 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, I, I believe in, I've read places that that same, probably the opposite of, of, of course, all gets re released, mm -hmm. right? And to be aware of those chemicals, that physiology, I feel Absolutely. is so important. It kind of changes the game. It affects your health. No doubt it affects yeah. your health. Um, well, it also, it leads to, I just finished an article on this, mm -hmm. uh, and I wrote about, you know, trying, want to lose weight, stop mm -hmm. stressing. Right. Because we think about, like, weight loss or, you know, achieving that optimal body or optimal performance, and it only has to do with diet and exercise. Right. And for me, that missing link was, after I finished Vipassana, it I was like, oh my God, mind. this is it. Like, yeah. it's the mind. Yeah. And if you... Are not if you're constantly like getting stressed out and releasing all this cortisol into your system, you can have the best. You can be working out, you know, seven days a week and eating pretty good, and you're probably still not going to achieve the results that you're looking for. Right. It all starts with the mind. That's, yeah. Uh, that's it. So somebody who's kind of struggling with that, what are the most people going to say? Like meditate. Like, well, how do I meditate? Where do I start? Yeah. And there's so many different takes on a routine, and I know I've kind of changed, uh, adapted my routine in different ways. I guess it's what works for you, but a beginner's uh, guide. Um, why should someone uh, meditate? First of all, I'm going to be the skeptic for that, like, you know, that, that difficult person that uh, what would be the true benefits? So obviously, they got to do it consistently, right? Before mm -hmm. they see anything. Um, what would be some of your advice and benefits uh, to them? I know we know that like celebrities, all these successful, famous people, they meditate, so there's got to be a method method to, to the, the madness. But uh, I guess kind of the things we Is to control their about, madness. <laughs> yes, uh, to control their madness. And I think, uh, yeah, I, I saw a patient's kind of moving me. I talked about the, the recharge. Um, even those days that I, if I'm completely hungover, I go down a few hours sleep and I shouldn't, yeah. and I go and then I, I meditate, I'll notice like my eyes like flickering inside, right? Yeah. My body telling me all these different things. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that could be one. I should be letting, letting you talk, but I feel like there's so many benefits. There's so much research yeah. out there. It's un underestimated. Um, did I leave? Did I leave yeah, there are a lot of benefits. And I think we talked about a bit earlier about yeah. like the health benefits, right? Like just um, in, when it comes to your physical well being and your emotional well being, trying to being able to control that stress response so you're not getting carried away with your emotions in every situation because let's face it like there are so many triggers that are occurring right. moment to moment in our life and if we don't have a way to 
protect ourselves and have mm-hmm. that awareness or that like uh mental health really. yeah like just to be able to notice like okay is this something like i want to react to or engage in or not we will be swept away all the time let's talk about the future of that people have the stigma when i say mental health we think asylum or this and that but no mental health is there and it should be treated equally to everything else you yeah. know um i know we don't have to get into um any any politics but what i meant was there was a reason why um you know police officers or being required i think in canada now to uh you know go to a meditation room and they yeah. have to meditate for a certain amount of time because it, it builds a practice but if you go way back to all the warriors they all meditated too yeah. and i think one of the reasons is they're going to be dealing with so many insane situations and difficult yeah. people and you know the crack kid on the corner so, and what it really allows them to do is not uh lose their cool be present yeah. right in the moment um, and it's almost uh, an edge in the military is bringing it to part of their curriculum. The coolest thing I saw was uh, in children uh, yeah. that instead of sending them to the principal's office, instead of sending them to yeah, meditation rooms, yeah, yeah, sending them meditation rooms and seeing that, wow, they've really been able to calm down and harness this energy and not um, get angry. And um, yeah. I can usually. Well, just going back to what you were saying with law enforcement and military, I mean, yeah, like one of the benefits is that they can keep their cool but the other one and like warriors you know ancient warriors that meditation was kind of a key of these old practices it was their intuition it heightened their intuition so they had eyes behind their head they could see someone coming and respond to it without having to look everywhere so that's what's most that's what meditation has done in the past and for our current day and age like no we don't necessarily have you know the old, you know, the story of like the saber to tiger yes, chasing yes, us. Yes, yes. However, what are our saber to tigers these days? The world, yeah. It's the stress Bills, that comes along yeah. with the deadlines or, you know, our money, relationships yeah. or money, like financial health, like all of that is that same saber to tiger. And mm-hmm. by having a meditation practice or by being more aware and kind of working on the emotional and mental health, mm-hmm. your personal emotional and mental health, you can be better prepared to deal with those situations. Yep. yep. Totally off topic. I um, read an article that uh, why Native Americans had long hair, that believe it or not, uh, they said that it was almost like another tentacle, and the longer it is, the more that they could know, even while they're sleeping, if somebody was right over them about to do something, yeah. that it was kind of that sixth sense. And what do you think I thought of right away? I'm like, could there be that that was the reason Bruegel and Singh, all of them, they all grew out their hair and had yeah. turbans? We don't, if somebody asked us today, we're like, well, we just didn't want to cut our hair. You know, we refused to do that. That's yeah. our thing. But who knows? Maybe it was because they had to take off to the jungle a lot of times. And it was kind of like their, their tentacle. I thought that yeah. was so Well, that makes me think like, well, what was that tentacle? Like, obviously the hair didn't like yeah. transfer information, but maybe it was like, because it's such like fine hair that it even the slightest movement there could be some movement in the hair that means you have to have the sensitivity yes. to be able to notice your hair moving and if you cut that away right um yeah. that that is an extremely bad thing but that, that was kind of um off topic what, what about a routine like starting there's yeah. no there's no perfect routine yeah. uh what would you recommend for, for starters to at least try yeah well i want to go back to what go i was saying there. earlier about meditation and kind of giving Please. that analogy with the weightlifting because there is this um, thought of, and what I initially thought meditation was having no thoughts in the mind, right? And really, like with meditation, what I've learned, at least from my experiences and what now I teach, is it's not so much about sitting down and completely emptying the mind. It's really those thoughts are the weights to your mental weightlifting. So as the thoughts continue to flow by, you're not attaching to any of the thoughts, but you're just noticing thoughts. And the type of meditation that I practice, that one, there's lots and lots of different ways of meditating and developing a mindfulness practice for yourself in your day-to-day life. The one that I've learned based off of my um, Vipassana training and insight meditation is just to have breath. It's a breath-focused meditation, right? The breath is with you wherever you go. You don't have to have any other uh, equipment. You have your breath with you and just kind of observing. And the breath gives us so much information. If the breath is shallow, if it's deep, if it's fast, if it's slow, it's telling us what our emotional state is. I feel like like no one has understood this, but me and I, I, you know, my biggest problem is cutting people off, so I'm like trying to, I I stop. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm trying to stop it. No, I'm, I'm gonna have you get right back to it. And the reason is, let me know if I'm wrong. But out of our total lung capacity, we're only using a percentage of yeah. it. Like you and I, right now, we're just and talking, but we're never fully emptying out, and we're yeah. never fully opening up. I think it's 17 percent of it. But to go back and the fact that you said your routine starts with. The breath just made me uh, so happy, but, I, but you tell yours first. Yeah. So <laughs> breath focus meditation. What that basically means change. is that you're focusing on the breath and just noticing the inhales and the exhales as they're um, moving through the body. And that's your point of focus, right? Like in the beginning, like let's just be real, like our minds need something to focus on, right? And so the mind focuses on the breath and the thoughts will continue to rise. And of course, your mind will wander away with a thought. It may be like, oh man, I have this thing on the to-do list. I need to do it. Uh, like, And then you start making, like analyzing, developing a checklist. And then at some point you're like, wait, where's the breath? Yes, and then you bring it back. Bring it back. Right? Yep. Now what will happen over time is not that the thoughts won't r arise, but that time between when your mind has wandered away with the thoughts to when you bring your mind back will get shorter and shorter. So that means you're able to maintain the focus on your breath for a longer period of time and you're strengthening you're gonna get your better at it. awareness muscle. You're strengthening your brain. You're strengthening your mind yep. by doing that practice. Um, so that's a very, very simple, basic practice. And I have tools that I'll share afterwards. Readtheride.com. Uh, that you can use um, a simple one that I so now let's talk about time because yeah. there is this thought of like oh I need an hour that's our greatest asset I time. don't have an hour to meditate every day that's the biggest that's the number one it. excuse you always get probably the number one excuse and everything, right yes I and don't have time either that so I get I don't have time I don't know how to I can't make my mind be quiet so mm -hmm. we've kind of talked about the second two right it's not so much about your mind being quiet. And um, I just taught you how to, so kind of like if you can't those. make your mind be quiet, you need to say much more than the other person. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but the time aspect, you know, this is what I tell like all of my students and anyone that I work with. It's I would r much rather have you do even one minute a day mm -hmm. than to do an hour a month. Yep. Right. So that consistency, that daily practice, goes a lot further than the quantity of time Makes that you sense. do. Ideally, you would want to be doing 20 minutes a day, mm -hmm. ideally. But um, I have a program that I teach, it's called Five Minute Mind, that just helps people build a five minute meditation yes. practice, one minute at a time, just so that you can have five minutes a day to do your meditation. Yeah. And then from there, you can continue to build up. Yeah. And, you know, and maybe it is that you're doing five minutes a day, and then on the weekends, you give yourself a little bit more time. And you sit a little longer. Which but I think best, most time, important, best time of the day, right in the morning, when you wake up. Um, you know, ideally, bed. yeah, like when you wake up, because your mind is already a bit clearer right when you wake up. Uh, so that is a good time to do it. Uh, a lot of people have told me when they try to meditate right before they go to bed, they fall it's asleep. Mm -hmm. But I also tell them, well, if you're falling asleep, and even if you're meditating throughout the day and you start to fall asleep, it probably means that you're tired <laughs> and you need more sleep. Right. Um, so, you know, again, like I like to use the meditation practice as an opportunity to have a conversation with my body. And that's, you know, we're not separate. Like my mind and my body are not two separate things. My body is housing this being within and it's, I have to treat it like a temple and I have to honor it and I have to like know what's going on those subtle signals what right. what typically happens like when people end up having any type of major life or health crises they it was probably going on a lot sooner than when that big event happened right, right. but we've just tuned it out so much and mm -hmm. and i'm guilty of it too like right. this definitely happened where i'm like i'll just push through it and i can do it you know run a little longer or whatnot right. and and then i end up in Ooh, was pain. that part of what got you into it I read somewhere that you know you were open enough and humble enough to say that I used to be a stress addict. Yeah, right? and, and uh, I'm not sure about it. Uh, a I'm a recovering, recovering stress, 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 stress addict. Yes, yeah. addict. Obviously, you're not now yeah. you're cool as a cucumber, but that's where that uh, kind of comes from, yeah. right? And, uh, yeah, I think I share a story about um, you know, like it went from I just would do a lot of things, and the thing was that I. All my work has been around the health and wellness field. So I was just teaching, I was working, uh, doing chronic disease 
management research during the day. I was teaching classes in the evening. I taught classes in the middle of the day. I was writing on a blog. Like I was doing all these things. And and then I was having a social life and I was kind of like trying to figure out how it all works together. And of course, like I found myself like having one cup of coffee to two cups of coffee to three cups of coffee and just you know, ended up like having a panic attack. And i.e. you are normal in oh, everybody <laughs> else right now. Yeah. And yeah. the panic attack and the like this whole like word anxiety, right? Everyone seems to have anxiety these days. And uh, is, people are trying to make it a social norm, but it's, it's not. You know, and it is, but it is a normal part of our physiology. It's like normal. it's just energy and it just ends up being anxious energy because we're not able to focus it in any one way. And we're, when we get distracted and, you know, you pick up your phone. So again, I was at this culture summit and there was this really interesting fact that one of the presenters uh, presented, I think she was from Facebook, but she said that the average American touches their phone, their mobile phone, 2,617 times a day. And so collectively, Americans touch the, their phone 8 billion times a day. Uh, the, That's a lot. Usually, usually right when they wake up, it's the first thing that they grab, which is insane, right? And I think another stat from uh, Gary was 50% of the time used on our phone has where it's on a network or we're just, that's our screen yeah. now, period. It we're just like line. wasting time. Right. Yeah. Right. But it was just amazing. I'm like, wow, we touch our phones more than we probably like look into our own eyes or like, you know, put like just touch our own or talk bodies even to or our, like people in our same yes, house interact our with life. another human right. it's just so amazing how much these phones have taken over which is why i think it comes from a lot of people saying that you know obviously uh, meditation is going to continue to become more important this yeah. is going to continue to become more important we're going to see more pop-up uh Ruth runs these pop-up meditation labs um yeah and let me tell you a little bit about the pop-up sure. meditation lab sure. because um one of my uh I guess my missions with meditation is to make it more of a social norm and to bring it outside of studios and into day-to-day life. So with the pop-up meditation lab, it started when I was living in San Francisco. I actually had gone to a local hair salon um, and, and it was an Aveda salon and she had this beautiful space in the mission and I asked her what she did with it in the evenings and she wasn't using it. I'm like, God, this would be perfect. Like, I want to host a meditation here. And so then this whole concept came to me about partnering with local businesses mm. during their off hours to host a meditation lab. And so they would donate the space. I would donate, you know, the teaching and mm-hmm. we would just open it up to the community so people could come in and experience meditation. You're giving value for free and you're not looking for anything in return. And guess what? It actually ends up reciprocating and yeah. leading to better things right. in life. Well, and like a lot of people who maybe could really benefit from meditation won't be the ones going to the yoga studio or now to the meditation studios. They're not going to be spending 20, 30 bucks for a class. And I don't necessarily think so you would have convince to them do on the that. fly uh, when they were visiting the businesses or so forth, or, or they would visit the businesses and then hear about. Yeah. So like, then we would cross promote, right? Like okay, I would it, promote it. it. The business would promote it. Cause they're going to come in there. Yeah. The and they're going to come in there. And, um, and it was just like, it was just a different group of people that it attracted because they knew, oh, it, it just kind of, sometimes it's intimidating going to some of these studios, right? Like, especially if you're new. So it kind of removed that barrier to meditation and people came in that really genuinely were interested in what, what it's about. So since then I've led, um, I don't know, like a dozen or so around in different, as I travel, I've led it in different countries. I've led it in different states. And um, yeah, it's been really cool to partner with businesses for that purpose. Okay, Risa, I want you to critique. Uh, critique? My, critique my, my routine. So I, I kind of have a quick uh, uh, recorder that just uh, of my own voice to, uh, you know, a few positive affirmations that I have and I, I go through. And the first thing I do, I saw this with Tony Robbins is I want to connect the breath as well and i'll go through and i'll do a set, three sets of 30 of just inhaling here mm-hmm. and this is just the nose and exhaling through the nose power mm-hmm. powerful powerful ones right yeah and then i continue on close my eyes the affirmations think of three things that i'm grateful for yeah. i give my uh, blessings to everybody closest to me all the way out uh, to work and then i try to play and visualize Three of my top goals that I want yeah. to happen, and then 
break and try not to rush that. And that routine came uh, before that. I just I had so many different until I got to that. But it just uh, it leads me to a completely different day, and I feel like I'm at the point right when I forget to. It's almost like the entire day goes like crap. Yeah. Maybe that's my own mind telling me that. But uh, yeah. what do you what do you think about that? Because I'm kind of connecting the breath with that. You are, and that's a great, it's a great routine. Well, great. A to F, the G. No, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) But I I, I like the routine, and I think there's a lot of, like, these morning routines. I mean, you can Google morning routines, and you're going to hear about every successful person's morning routine, and there's lots of different ways that you can start your morning. But ultimately, it's about, you know, developing that self-awareness and connecting with yourself, and then having um, a gratitude practice and connecting uh, and Doing that due that diligence to yourself right others. off the bat. Loving yourself before you can love yeah. others. A lot of people, a lot of CEOs talk about, I write down three things I'm grateful for. This guy for. really does like to interrupt, huh? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. But uh, this is just backhand yeah. me. Uh, but, I, th- I, I think writing down three things you're grateful for, even if you don't meditate like a lot of CEOs do, that's a form of meditation. Would you agree? Because you're doing a routine. Yeah, it's not... Yeah. The elaborate, but you yeah. took a moment for yourself. You did take a moment for yourself. Absolutely. It's more of a gratitude practice. Right. Okay. And that's a great practice to have. Everyone should have a gratitude practice every day where you're just kind of... Because the thing is, what we're, research is showing that when people have that gratitude every day, they spend some time just thinking about everything they're grateful for. It shifts the way that your mind thinks. Sure. You're shifting more into a positive state versus like naturally our minds will go to everything that didn't go well throughout the day right? Mm-hmm. It's work to think about everything that did go well. Mm-hmm. And so when you begin to shift that, you Especially begin to Indian. feel better yeah. and you feel more optimistic. And then you have this energy like, okay, now I can go do more and I can conquer more and I can like develop bigger goals for myself. Um, and then the, the other part that you said about your morning routine is to also think about the goals that you have, right? Mm-hmm. Like what are like the three big things that you're going to tackle throughout the day and like tackling them head on? Because oftentimes when we don't have those set goals, we end up all over the place. And the one thing that I've heard, I think is a really good morning practice to have is don't check your email first thing in the morning, because the moment you check your email, you're on somebody else's schedule, right? Not your own schedule. So give yourself that first hour of the day and make it your sacred time where you're just being with yourself and honoring yourself and then make a conscious effort to check your email. And of course there's, you know, lots of, Various uh, hacks on how to tackle your inbox mm-hmm. so that you're being the most effective, the most productive. Because Tim first, Tim first has got a cool yeah. one. Check it out. Did you think of that too? I feel like we're on the same. Yeah, level there's there's a lot okay. like out there, and I not to say like I love technology. I love my phone. I yep. love being on social media and all of that stuff. But I don't want to like outsource my life to technology. Yep. Like I want to be in charge and be in control. Have you noticed that when you pause? during the day and then you meditate and you come back um, that you almost feel not just boost energy physically but even uh, mentally when it comes to emails etc yeah. do you feel a bit uh, of a difference has that um, worn out for you I feel like it's a you know it's it's the tea versus coffee right yeah. it's the clean okay I feel more efficient I mentally. do like my first coffee Right. Oh no, no. I, I love caffeine. That that was that was, uh, that was an that example. I but... say that because like I think there's this like thought of like oh like if you meditate and you do yoga then you have this certain lifestyle and and like you don't you know there's certain things you do or do not do and I just I've always kind of wanted to bust those myths because we're all human beings. Right. And, right. You know, no, no. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Things. I saw some some brain scans of somebody before doing uh, uh, kind of part right mm-hmm. and then after and. Uh, uh, prayers a form of meditation would you kind so, of so okay prayer is interesting right like yeah. and this is something that i've talked to my mom about like she has this ritual like every single day she's gonna do bot and but then great. sometimes it's like her mind is like focused on like whatever's on the stove or she's obviously somewhere else and yes prayer is there's lots of different forms of meditation you can do a walking meditation but the key to what differentiates it from being a meditative practice mm-hmm. to just a ritualistic practice is the level of awareness if you're doing a walking meditation that means you are so aware of every single toe touching the ground the sensation on your feet like the wind as it like brushes your skin the sun you know coming down on you like you're aware of all of your senses are connected into that moment mm-hmm. and that's what makes it meditative I scratch my nose don't scratch your nose right you got to bring it back 
Yeah. Uh, any apps you recommend? I feel like those are getting bigger as well, self-guided they meditation are. apps. Any they are. Any you like or use? Uh, I, I, I completely stopped, right? Yeah. The best app is right here. But for people who are starting, they exactly. need Exactly. You just uh, like... Nailed it. You just nailed yeah. it right there. So, so I, I So I, because I've worked in um, corporate wellness, and that's kind of my career that's what I do is work with companies and develop programs but um and I also tested out so many apps like being in San Francisco and stuff so okay. like I was the person that was wearing a Fitbit like there was one, at, the one focus group. Yeah, at one point like and I loved it and I like technology I like all of like, knowing the data but I had a Fitbit on I was trying on Aspire and Aspire the Aspire device is what like it measures your breath and you get little notifications and it vibrates telling you to take a deep breath mm-hmm. I had a water bottle uh Osmo cup that like will vibrate if you haven't drank water in an mm-hmm. hour. Um, you know, the sit to stand desk, like mm-hmm. and all these devices. And then I looked and like, and I still like them. They're fun, but just more tasks, I felt like I just things. outsourced yeah. my senses to all of these devices and they're really good to give you the awareness, but ultimately your breath is probably your ultimate wearable, your ultimate tracking device. And like we were saying earlier, uh, noticing if your breath is shallow or deep. If you're shallow breathing, you have like some of that anxiety that's building up, right? If you like start breathing really, really quickly, we know that's associated with some stress. God, I gotta or push anger. You to talk to my wife. So like those type of things. And and the cool thing is if you notice like, okay, like I'm breathing shallow, all you do is change the breath. It changes your mood. Like there is research that shows that and that's amazing. So you can oxygenate your blood too. Yeah, you can shift change the like, physiology. A really, really fast breath that's like in a state of like stress or anger, you can just start manipulating the breath and slowing it down so it can shift right. your mood, shift your physiology, which I think is amazing. But with apps, there are a couple that I do like. Um, the one that I use all the time is called Insight Timer, and I use that as a timer for my okay. meditation practice. I also like it in, in my... Um, the courses that I teach, I use Insight Timer and I talk about it because it's a way for anyone that's starting out, if you're doing a breath-focused meditation and your mind wanders away, um, you can set it that a bell will ring every two minutes or every five minutes. So then the bell kind of becomes an indicator of, okay, where is your breath? Has it wandered away? Let me bring it back. Right. Or where is my mind? Like, let me bring it back to my breath. So right. I, I like that. as a. It's not a guided meditation, but it's a timer. Um, Headspace is a popular one, and okay. a lot of people use Headspace. Uh, and- Budafire was in when I was actually using it way back, like three, four yeah. years ago. Now it's, I mean, they change as they go. But maybe if, if people need that that modification, that crutch uh, at the beginning, that's cool. But at the end of the day, there's nothing better than nothing, yeah. right? Because yeah. the whole point is trying to listen to you. Yeah. I've heard I heard some Buddhist monks talk about uh, calming the monkey chatter in the mind, right? Yeah. Letting the monkey talk. Um, and so forth. Uh, yeah. I think, man, of all the talks, I feel like this is for a lot of people the most um, life saving, in my opinion, and it's going to continue to be because, uh, but, not, but it's not going to happen without consistency. Yeah. Uh, what would you, you can meditate anywhere. Would you recommend, you know, always finding that we're creatures of habit, right? We're always going to find that one place, but you can meditate if you, I've heard Deepak Chopra talk about you can meditate uh, when you're on a plane. Right? Yeah. You can meditate anywhere yeah. and go through your routine and so forth. Um, and I would recommend doing that. Like if you commute to work on a train, like take that time and make it your meditation time. But most importantly, when you wake up in the morning, just make it a habit to like get up. Like I typically like, uh, you know, roll to the side. Don't ever just sit straight up because it's really bad for your back. Mm. But roll over to your side, sit yourself up. I'll do like a forward bend and just kind of wake up my spine. And then I'll sit there and I'll just do um, like five minutes. It's just like my morning check-in time. To like waken my breath up again because if you're sleeping your breath has been shallow and so you want to like take time to wait it's like you're not going to go and run a marathon I, 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 without warming up right with that said i've heard your lungs are also the strongest uh, right when you wake up versus you know we can feel that difference towards the end yeah. of the night resting, which is yeah. why you should uh you know run in the morning and also probably the answer why you should recommend to actually uh, meditate in the yeah morning. i heard this these, these fighters uh talk about the fact that you know when they're in training they don't set uh, alarms because you know, they study physiology so much that it's so important that whenever their eyes open is whenever their eyes open because that's the honest and natural way uh, that your body actually is fully rested. Yes. The eyes open. 
Yeah. And that just made me think like, whoa, because in our minds it's like it's a normal to have an alarm, right? It's, I mean, we got crap to do, right? We got a job and so forth. I think just saying that just shows you little things of just so much going on in there yeah. that we don't know about, right? Yeah. But and the other thing just, that's really good with like the meditation and like the gratitude practice is oftentimes people don't sleep very well because they have so much still in their mind. And so if you can begin to have this practice, um, you know, both morning and night and just kind of spend that time to like go through your day and just take an inventory of like, this is everything that happened. This is what I'm grateful for. This is how I could have done better in these situations. Either write it down or, you know, just kind of make a mental note of it so that you've cleared it away. So and then that, go to bed. And then go to bed. That too, yeah. So that you don't, you have a clear conscience mm -hmm. and you can get that deep rest that right. your body needs right. without like constantly trying to like remind yourself like oh remember I got to think about this I got to mm -hmm. think about this tomorrow I have mm -hmm. to remember this right, and write, writing all of them down uh, read before you go to bed it's not to be more organized in OCD but literally when you write them down uh, what you're gonna do tomorrow you can really sleep in in peace yeah right? and it made you more efficient and productive um, as well so I've read that um, amazing I, yeah. think, I think that's very cool so right so, now I felt like five I think we're going on 51 minutes, but oh, no, that, okay. that's, that's okay. Keep going, please. Oh, I was I just going to like share like a couple of like Absolutely. my resources. Yes, yes, yeah? yes, please. Um, please yeah. So I mentioned earlier the five minute mind, which, so if anyone's like looking to start a meditation practice and you're not, no, you don't know where to get started. Um, this, I created it because I worked with a lot of people and I created it for them mm -hmm. as a part of a bigger pra a practice, a bigger program. But it basically is a week long, like day one, do one minute. Day two, do two minutes. Nice. Day three, is three minutes. And it so gives you're you a step by step guide. Building one minute on top of the other to develop a five minute meditation practice. Uh, you'll have to listen to me guiding. So if you are annoyed by my voice, sorry. <laughs> Probably not the program for you. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> um, but no, you I, I, and I say that not to like like be self deprecating or anything. It's really important to find a teacher that you connect with. Like right. some people like love you know, someone's voice and that's like where they really resonate and connect. So that should be who you're following. Whereas like someone else could be a very popular teacher, but if you're not connecting with them, don't right. force yourself because right. you're also like may have some low grade anxiety every time you listen to that. Sure. Yeah. That, uh, every, and every meditation. single individual is different. Right? Exactly. Yeah, so. Exactly. Um, and then going beyond that, um, when with meditation and what I do, I just realized my coffee's in the sun. I'm um, go <laughs> But I don't want to, I already have a bad enough time like yeah. moving around. And um, so, but like going beyond that applied meditation, right? So we've spent a lot of time just talking about meditation and developing that practice. But where I'm at right now is how do you actually build, um, especially within a workplace or just in life, how do you build a culture of mindfulness? Because it's one thing if you're all, you sit and you do meditation individually, it's kind of a, you know, isolated practice, but then how do you take it out into the world? And that's where the mindfulness comes in. Right. Meditation is that tool. You're building the awareness, but now like you have to apply it execute. into your day to day yes, life. Yes. Well, what's um, the point if you don't actually Exactly. Execute. And one aspect of it is uh, with stress. And so being that stress was something that was a big part of my life and something I really wanted to manage and tackle. Um, I realized that there are stress that's hidden in everyone's life. And that was the stress I really wanted to become aware of, like the hidden stressors. So the other program I have is the 21 day stress detox. And the first week of it is this five minute practice. Um, but then we begin to make it a habit and use that practice. Like the flashlight goes on with the meditation practice. And now you get to take it out into the world and see where is stress hidden in my life. And it could be hidden in your commute. It could be hidden in a standing meeting you have every week with a certain colleague of yours. It could be hidden in your relationship. It could be hidden you know, in your own inner self critic. And those are the things that you want to tackle. Because once you shed light on where stress is hidden, you can do something about it. Right? Like you can change your commute, you can add a podcast, or you can do something to make that experience um, altered and a bit more enjoyable for yourself. So it's not having that low grade stress. And if, if anybody uh, you know, owns a startup, something they want you to come in, the best way to reach you is probably readtherack.com. Yeah. Cool. And how the pop up meditation labs been uh, going? Uh, we've been doing a few of those, um, and that's something you can do anywhere, anytime. We're gonna set one up. You'll see. Yeah. Over, uh, over 
Yeah, and if anyone has a business that you want to offer up the space and yeah. uh, collaborate on doing a pop-up meditation lab, mm-hmm. let me know because I'm always looking for new spaces to host it. I had somebody ask a question during the Bikram Yoga talk. They said, okay, well, that's that's kind of the physical and it is mental, but how would you relate that back? Uh, it was my buddy uh, Morgan. How would you relate that back to actual... Where's the connect between, okay, there's yoga, there's meditation in the mind. Um, uh, how in my yoga practice can I be uh, more aware of my mind uh, yeah. and, and so forth? That was, I thought that was an interesting question because I, I didn't know the answer at the time. If you listen back to the talk, I didn't really know the answer well. But, but I guess what that person needs to understand is, is you're doing it right then. You're doing it right then, yeah. but you just got to do it consistently, right? Well, and that like is a whole other talk in itself of like understanding and breaking down yoga. So what right. we've see as yoga here in the western world is one aspect of the entire system of yoga and that's just the asana practice which is just the physical practice of yoga Um, but there's you know multiple aspects of the yoga system mind meditation and focus being one aspect of it and traditionally the asana practice was used to just open up the body and tire it out so that it would prepare you to sit to meditate right Okay, so um, so that's one way of looking at your asana yoga practice uh, and meditation and how they correlate. Go through your physical practice and prepare, which prepares you to then sit and have you know a twenty minute mm-hmm. silent meditation practice, mm-hmm. and then also while you're in doing your asana practice, mm-hmm. having the awareness of like where is my body, right? right? Like, that's how it translates over. You get to actually see, like, being a yoga teacher for years now, it's really funny when I say, put your right foot forward. And I look around, and sometimes people have the wrong foot. I'm like, right, and I can repeat it. And there's just this disconnect between mind and body. So that's that happening right there. Yeah. Becoming more more self-aware. Yeah, becoming Uh, more self-aware. Bringing it back. Bringing it back. And then in in, uh, in Savasana, right, which is considered to be the most, uh, most important at the end, that everybody gets up and walks away. Yeah, the most right. important yoga. Oh, that, I, think, I think that's that comedian <laughs> uh, that, that I posted about. But um, that's the most important part of, of, of having a narrator and having someone who uh, guides you. Because, again, when they tell you, you know, to the tips of uh, your fingers, open your head, you got yeah. no worries. And you're saying that right back to yourself. Um, you're being mindful, yeah. right, of your, of your body, yeah. understanding. And every day that you do that, um, it's crazy. You always say pause, and I think it comes back to pause, like to answer Morgan's question. First of all, you're in a 90 minute uh, class and there's no phone and you're not talking to anyone and you're closing your eyes parts of the time. Uh, there's no better sense of mindfulness right there for yeah. yourself. Uh, but that compounded over uh, time. Um, and you take that person and then you take a person that has never even touched something like that but has just been through the ruggedness of, of life. They're, they're gonna be two completely different mindsets, mm-hmm. stress levels health and it's insane how that all tie, ties back to chronic disease which you've studied uh, mm-hmm. a lot right yeah. uh, we don't hear we don't hear doctors talk about it. it's crazy i think that's more the american system but i literally think i tell my sister okay why is there not as much nutrition in your curriculum and why isn't there not more mindfulness yeah. uh, it's getting there it's, it, it, it's, it's starting absolutely, yeah. because people are putting it on paper People yeah. are starting to have research right. to back it up. There's research to back it up. And, you know, over the last, whatever, like 10, 15 years, there's been a, an immense amount of research when it comes to Holistic. neuroscience, yes, right? Yes. Like, okay. just like the, the the whole, like, concept that our brains are not static and, like, neuroplasticity, our brains are constantly changing and evolving and that you could actually, like, increase gray matter in your brain. That was my mind-blowing like that, that was the morning pr- prayer thing that i was uh watching right you can yeah. see holes in the brain uh and i think that is because uh we had mris but just recently we started getting um the MRI. The, uh, yeah, the, yeah. the brain yeah. scans um and i think that's where that comes from i think e- ekg are, are the little stems that you what is ekg uh, when they're talking about the three th- things you're grateful for they literally tied that to a person uh and, and saw that their ekgs were different up and down okay. uh, three things they're grateful yeah. for Last thing to wrap up, how important do you think visualization is? Uh, some people, uh, you know, roll their eyes on the woo-woo, but I believe in it completely. Uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on it because really quickly, same thing they tied up. EKGs, the people 
when they go through their routine like an Olympic runner and they actually see those muscles firing that mm-hmm. the person would be using yeah. when they visualize their 100 meter race and and so I mean this is science yeah. you can't argue against that yeah. but I, when I hear that and I know a lot of athletes are obsessed with it um, I think that that is uh, insane and something yeah. that made me research more and so forth uh, yeah. proves it. And uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because I just recently went to a talk when I was in Amsterdam with Dr. Joe Dispenza and a lot of his work is around, he doesn't quite call it visualization, but it's like training, like, for example, just like if you think about an event that happened in your past, right? And let's say it was a sad event. You could, in this present moment, that event is no longer happening, but you could bring up all of the emotions related to that event as if it was happening right this moment. Brilliant. So still, if still that, traumatic, physio- physiologically. If that is true, yeah. like you could literally bring yourself to tears. You can have like the physiological logical experience of this event happening today, even though it happened 10 years ago or something. So in the same way, the way that my thought around that works is if that's true, then in the same sense, if you think about a future event, something you're trying to attain and really feel all of the emotions that that event would make you feel had it be if it was happening right this moment like bring that into your mind and body your mind and body all they know is like this is happening so you're priming yourself for this event to happen and mm-hmm. bringing it closer and closer to you. Now that gets into this whole other realm of like. So, so, so that was the last part of my routine. Physics, it yeah. wasn't. It wasn't my goals for the day. It was actually my three biggest goals yeah. every sing, a single day at the end of that uh, routine. Uh, but actually, putting it in physical form, like for example, lofty goal, but to be rookie of the year, at, uh, KW. Right. So, some of my colleagues might <laughs> laugh, but I'm literally seeing the blue tux that I'm wearing, the black stripes, holding the freaking trophy and actually going up and giving my current speech of, of one of my, my three right long term yeah. goals. And that's at the end of after three things you're grateful for. Yeah. Bless ev- everyone else. Right. And then the last thing is those. And that's back to visualization. So we just did the breath. We meditated and we visualized. But uh, it all starts, I will just say it all starts with the breath and awareness. And that's kind of the key that kind of starts this cascade of events. So, and that's the first step in even getting to that point. If you don't have the awareness and if you haven't developed the sensitivity to have awareness, it's, it makes it far more difficult to visualize. I often get people telling me, I'm like, oh, I don't like, I can't visualize things. And, you know, yeah, if you're not even in your body and you can't even like notice your body, it's kind of difficult to visualize your body in like these future mm-hmm. situations, right. Right? right? So again, like bringing that back inwards and starting with a meditation practice, even a short meditation practice, five minutes a day, every single day, and just making it a routine and a habit and then noticing what happens from there because your body will guide you. Right. Exactly. And if you can't, Keep going. You're right there. You're already starting, right? You're having trouble in ba- breaking past that, uh, what it would look like, uh, where you would, you would be, and so forth. You know, so cool. What was the name of the professor again from Amsterdam that you just mentioned? Uh, he wasn't, he's not from Amsterdam. Okay, okay. Um, he, was off, he was giving his program in okay, Amster- Amsterdam, but he's from next, here, actually. My next question was be like, I wonder if he's worked with Wim Hof, because Wim Hof's been surra- oh, yeah, yeah, surrounded yeah. by these guys, yeah. trying to put on paper yeah. everything he believes, because... Um, they do believe it. And his, yeah. again, and his hit, stuff is breath. all around like the breath work. Yeah. And I did the Wim Hof breath work when I was in Barcelona oh, and it so was cool. amazing on a different level, right? Like that's like literally like taking your brain to a whole other level. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was the first time I ever experienced something like that. So. Did you do the, the hold and then got the tingly kind of sensations? Like you're I was about? gone. Like my mind was like in a whole other that, place. That was, so. the, that was the insane part. I just yeah. posted that recently because out of all of his, the best one he ever did was he, he had this, the, uh, this kid wanted to come in actually document is I recommend you check that out. I think I posted that recently but it, and, and all of a sudden it's jumped uh, I think it's at 700,000 views it'll come up as the first Wim Hof but you can easily do that yeah. and what he shows is people think they can't hold their breath underwater for more than a minute or more than two minutes yeah he doesn't recommend that you know you try that first but that just shows that it's okay everything I learned uh, acting all, all that I went back to nutrition wise was yeah. the whole alkaline versus acid oh, right? you yeah, can grab yeah. it feel free. Uh, <laughs> my, my the whole God. alkaline versus acid so when I heard Wim Hof actually talk about pH yeah. and in that method what you're doing is this is the only way you know aside from food even though food is best that you just oxygenated all of your blood and you just made your entire pH alkaline when I heard him say that um, after right going through his method I was like holy crap and say you don't care about meditation, but you're just all about beauty and you want your skin to be clear and you want to whatever, 
do the freaking Wim Hof method. You want alkaline pH, it's going to help with clarity. It's yeah. going to help with your body's chemistry, right? Because right. uh, there's a whole and chemistry. And it's beyond just there. drinking alkaline water. Hundred yes, <laughs> yes. Now Don't every time I every time I gave that example, or whatever to get those. Every numbers. time I gave that example, everyone, everyone would repeat back like, "Oh yeah, like alkaline water, kinda, but more." At first, it was the alkaline foods because there's not that many. You know, yeah. Kale is alkaline, spinach is alkaline, coconut's alkaline. Oh, what do you know? Those end up also being the ones people are talking about now. The yeah. big fats. Yeah. Um, but the bottom line is, we were meant for that. We were designed to be cavemen. We were designed to be. Mm-hmm. But guess what? Now we're in 2017, and everything's hot Cheetos puffs and like. Right, made at the cost of business, and then now we see the effects on yeah. humans, and it's literally affecting their mental health, their physical health, uh, their emotional health. Which I yes. think you know we don't even realize in our little talk we are both on that level, so we understand. But for somebody with an open mind, uh, we just may have lit a spark and brought some value for them. Uh, and, and I totally encourage you. Uh, critique us, assume we're completely wrong and do your research for yourself yeah. and see what you take in on uh, and we should do anything in life is yeah. don't take that person literally but distinguish for yourself with an open mind what's BS or is not BS in your yeah. opinion and take what you can from it and make it uh, your own and I guarantee you'll probably learn something yeah. new in the process yeah, yeah I like to say like you are the scientist of your own laboratory and your laboratory is your body and like yeah, go into it with a scientist's mind and research. Like, okay, give it a try and see how your body responds to it, whether that happens with food or, you know, the meditation practice that we talked about or other practices that that people talk about and share. Try it out for yourself and see if it works for you. Don't just blindly follow a system just right. because, like, everyone else is doing it because right. it may not be ideal for you, right. right? And, like, know that your body is constantly changing. Like, just like the seasons are constantly changing, Changing. Your body's constantly changing day to day, season to season. So it's really important to always evaluate, right? Like it's funny, we spend more time in our business, like businesses doing like business plans and looking at data and evaluating than we do looking at our bodies and our minds 100%. and like going like, okay, does yeah. this diet still work for me? Do I need to shift it? Do I need to tweak it? Right. And you know, then, then operating from there. Gosh, I, I think that that turns into so many uh, other things. I always talk about there's two sides to every story and then there's the truth. I never used to think like that. I'm trying to think, where do I attribute that to? And even though we're being mindful, we're being present in the moment, I feel like when it translates us to being calm, being objective, and trying to understand those things, it's like I go back, I feel like that all collides. I mean, collides not the right word, builds momentum from mindfulness and practice. Mm-hmm. And when people come to you with some crazy story, um, usually anybody else, they would jump and take their side and yeah, this and that. But I feel like being aware of the self um, will allow them, of course, you know, you don't want to be rude to them, but it allow you to think about those things and, and think about, okay, well, let's really think about this calmly, objectively. Yeah. What was that person thinking about? What was, what were you thinking about? Right? Is it possible that there's a middle? And they look at me like I'm an alien and I'm, I'm thinking that way, <laughs> but, but what's wrong? I'm supposed yeah. to think that way, right? Where did that come from? But I need to understand um, that there's a completely different mindset going through yeah. their mind. I'm not any be- better than them. I'm not saying that, but there's an entirely different chemistry. So I think the big picture is not only changes yourself, but in turn, you can't convince that person on racism. You can't convince that person on everything that's going on right now in Facebook and Virginia and all those things. I know you hate politics. I probably won't talk about that. Not that I hate but, <laughs> but but I, I I literally think that you can. You can't brainwash a person who's mindful and, and who is has a huge uh, assess flex that mind, that brain to be objective and think mm-hmm. um, for themselves. And um, I think that's important because when people do try to do that, they use emotion, they use exactly. fear, they use anxiety. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy because I'm saying all this now, but this literally just like dawned upon me right now yeah. <laughs> as we're having this. Uh, yeah, no, that's this, absolutely this true. Like if you're not mindful and like kind of grounded in your so that's own a damn sense benefit of self right there. Yeah. is that, you know, when there are situations that occur, like you get caught up in the emotions of it versus like stepping back and like observing and being able to respond to it. And that's mm-hmm. like the biggest like benefit is that you're less reactive and more responsive Absolutely. and not to say like it doesn't awesome. happen like again we're human beings and we react i've reacted in the past i have moments where i get reactive but then i can also notice and like step back and mm-hmm. that's the most important 
Like, I, I think that was a million dollar it. thing that you just said for any big businessmen who are making crucial decisions that affect their life is pause, take a step back and ask yourself, we're in such a go-go world, do I have to respond right now? Yes. Do I really have to respond yeah. to this email? Do I really have to make this decision right now? Yes, at the same time, two opposites speed kills in some things, but yeah. is it mandatory for me to speak, right? Um, it's a huge problem I have. Like, should I, could I just stay silent? Would my thoughts be completely different yeah. if I took 24 hours no matter what? Even if I'm a, I made up what I'm going to do, uh, and then tomorrow you'll realize you have a completely different perspective. Exactly. On that. You just nailed it. Like, I mean, I think like how this could transfer over into like workplaces. We spend so much time in like yeah, workplaces. Use that when you talk to with, me. Like, this is the truth. I mean, you're not with, using in, anything. Well, in like meetings and stuff, right? And like half the time I used to wonder, like, what is anyone even saying? Because everyone's talking, and I'm not like really big talker so right. i tended to be the quiet person i listen a yeah. lot and I, uh, I, I had done a training i can't remember with who at this point but he kind of said like when you're going to speak speak with purpose mm -hmm. and speak say something that's meaningful that's right. going to add something add value don't just speak just to speak mm -hmm. right and we spend so much time speaking because we're uncomfortable with silence and we're uncomfortable, with, like especially if there's only two people speaking, yep. and then there's that moment of silence, and it's like, well, we need to fill this. We need to fill and, it and with easier, something, yes, right? And easier said than done, but I've read that too. Always say less than necessary. Yeah. Oh, shit. And what would happen if you didn't fill that yeah. void? Right. What would happen? Like, there's just space, and in space is where something new and different can be created. Right. If we're filling up every single moment with something, then where is there space for spontaneity? That's so true. And just because it's quiet doesn't mean that that means it's awkward. You know, all my greatest coaches and all of them, uh, they're the most soft-spoken people that you'll ever meet. No, it's just a quote saver. Oh. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> they're the most, uh, which I always admire. My grandfather, I love to death, and he's just like, always had this swag that he's just so cool and calm. Yeah. And I'm such a, a yapper that uh, I'd always admire that. Where does that come from? And I, I feel like really... I don't even know. It. Yeah. It's not acquired, but like Coach Fernandez, my biggest influence in my life in basketball. But it's crazy because he's so quiet, not loud at all. The other coaches are screaming, yeah. right? But when he speaks, everybody listens. Yeah. The whole room gets quiet. And it's just so powerful. And even when it comes to, to business, they always say, um, always say less than necessary. It's 48 laws of power because um, then you sound ordinary when you yeah. speak so much. Right? Yeah. Uh, last thing I, I said to Rudy is that, that I love is that we – when we talk, we're just repeating what somebody else say, says, but when we listen, we might learn something new, right? That, the dialogue is that it's uh, just so much more powerful. And even all the gurus I read, if I want to be a great leader, I want to run my parents' stores right, the number one thing that all I have to do is just shut the hell up when I walk in there and let everybody vent. And when they're done, then speak. Similar to a judge. A judge doesn't talk during the entire court case. When it's done, then he gives his word. Yeah. There's the answer. Now do it so much harder yeah it's so hard to do right but again another thing that i need to continue to step my meditation game up and continue to because i feel like that is one way that i will uh, build that even being patient uh, with, with my parents if i haven't meditated for three or four days i'm quicker to snap yeah. right and then all of a sudden i have you can put, you can give you can throw any well but what are entrepreneurs doing they wake up and they're putting out fires every day yeah there, stress is not going to, problems aren't going to go away in business. In business, no matter what your product is, it's how calm you can remain to find a solution to the problem going on today. Exactly. And that is probably the biggest thing for CEOs. Of, if they ask you, well, what am I going to get out of this? Right? Uh, that would be my advice to them is because, listen, you're talking to me right now in this conference room. When you walk outside, there's going to be seven problems or ten problems going on. That's not going to go away. Because if you don't have problems, you're not in business mm -hmm. or you don't have a good business, right? But what are you doing to make sure that uh, when those come about, you're chill, there's no emotion involved, there's no anxiety, so you can make the best decision for yourself? Exactly. In my opinion, that, for any business person who's listening, is probably the biggest, uh, most valuable reason what mindfulness and meditation uh, can do for you. Yeah. That was, that was pretty awesome. We should definitely do this again. But uh, anything anything else? Where else can we find you besides you? So, oh, you're writing for Huffington. That's awesome. Or you doing you you did some articles? They have different uh, people all the time, right? Yeah, so I do write for the Half Post, um, and I'll post articles there. And then I write at my own personal blog, readtheriot.com. Okay. I write a lot on like food, movement, and meditation. That kind of became my prescription for optimal well-being. It's eat, move, meditate. Yeah. Um, What's the name of the last uh, Half Post? 
article for anybody who's checking it out. Gosh. Read it. Get some hits. Remember, get some hits on that. Um, I'll, I'll find we'll it. Yeah, I'll we'll find tag, it. I'll post we'll a link to it. it. Yeah. No um, and yeah, and for anyone that's listening who wants to start on a meditation practice, come by the five minute mind.com. The program is free right now, so you can just sign up and download the five minute meditation program and start meditating. Um, Doug Kwan, I owe you one if you're listening. I, I'm extremely late to your open house, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna make it up to you. Uh, but you know what? I, I was honest We're with him. Rolling I, with it. <laughs> I was honest with him. No, I was honest with him. I spoke to him already. But it sounds crazy because in my world, what's more, uh, that would be the key to being more productive. And yes, that's 100% true. But I felt I didn't waste a, a minute with you because just talking to somebody like this was just yeah. so valuable in the long run, the big game. Uh, and Doug might text me and be like, dude, can we read this number? That was awesome. Screw yeah. the open house. And the one care. thing that I'm going to uh, leave with is busy. So there's this word, and this is an article that I'm working on, this word Wonderful. busy, right? Like eliminating yeah. the word busy from your vocabulary because really, like, if you're, we're not, yes, we all have a lot that may be, uh, you know, fighting for our attention, mm -hmm. but you are making the choice to prioritize the things that you're prioritizing. Right. So, um, and just be honest with yourself. Don't just respond by saying I'm busy or I'm too busy for this or too busy for that. Like simply saying like, Hey, like I'm, I'm choosing to make this a priority over this. And there's no, it's not because I don't value this or that. It's just because this is a choice that I'm making. And so just being really honest with yourself as to like what you're prioritizing. And if you're prioritizing scrolling through Facebook for an hour, right. just re like realize that, recognize that. Right. 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 Like where is your time going? Because we said this earlier, like time is the most precious thing we have. And yeah. we're dying one second at a time. Yeah. So you got to make the most of that time. Well, so well said. Yeah. That's really been uh, my shift to everyone keeps asking about this real estate thing is uh, one thing. The power of one thing, focusing on one thing, especially uh, in this world, right? I was doing subway, doing this, yeah. coaching, doing all. And you think you're being busy. You think you're being uh, productive because you're doing a lot. But really, in, in the, the reality is you're actually uh, really shitty at seven different things. Like, you're not efficient mm -hmm. in that way. And that's what uh, Kel Williams, one thing to talk about. And the point of that was, that's what was driving me crazy. I can dig five, six different holes, or I can dig one hole and dig it super deep. Yeah. But the hard part was actually sitting everyone down and saying, no, don't take this the wrong way. I don't care what I do, uh, but I'm going to choose one thing, and I'm going to give it 100% be the best at it. And then you'll see true productivity. Right. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to, I was everywhere. I was uh, well, I'm everywhere now, but it's focused on on uh, on one thing, and uh, yeah. And I, I think I think that is, is so so important. I think that could change anybody who's who's talking. Is uh, we'll do three, four different things, and we're like, oh, I can't figure out what I'm gonna do. You keep cha changing it, right? It's easier said than done. And now I feel more and more confident about it because I heard yeah. he's got the number one podcast. I keep forgetting his name, but I, I put a, a, a um, uh, as far as Apple, but I put a, a quick clip on, on what mastery means to him. And he says that uh, in anything you do, um, on average, it takes 10,000 hours yeah. to achieve, uh, to just be decent at it, just be good at it. But the problem with so many of us, especially in this chatter world, is we lack patience. Yeah. Kind of thing with meditation, right? Obviously. And so... As soon as things are getting good, as soon as you're finally about to do what you do, yeah. Ritu, you should be a lawyer. Yeah. I don't know why you do meditation anymore. Yeah. It's usually the ones you love the most that are all in your ear. And what happens? You change. You go on to the next thing. And then right when you're about to do that and finish. So the power, I've been there. I right. know that feeling. So, yeah. so, again, we're confused on being busy. Yeah. Is well, and we get distracted by the bright, shiny objects, right? There's always going to be something new and different, or we're going to see like how other people are doing it, and we're like, oh shit, like okay. I should be there, like, and I'm not there yet, like, I need to go try out this new strategy versus like just you know, still like chugging away at your own strategy. Like, I, it reminds me of like when I run or like ran races, like. I definitely like see like a, when I was bike riding a lot, like somebody would try to creep up on me and like speed and like go faster than me, but I'm still like holding my pace and they would burn so out funny. and then I'm like going and I'm, yes, you yes. know, ahead of them in yep. the long run. So it, you have to choose your game. Are you in it for the long game or are you in it for the short game? And it's difficult. It really is difficult because there's a lot of distractions out there. But very, very well said. Yeah. And so it's important, like the meditation, the awareness, like surrounding yourself with like people that you can 
like talk to because you're not. No one's gonna do this well, on their well, own. Well, no one's gonna do this in silo. Three uh, focus. Everyone's looking for the the magic pill, but the magic pill is consistency. And number three benefit of meditation would be if you want to sharpen your focus, if you want to not look at the bright shiny objects. That would be that. And I got to yeah. put that in, into words just for uh, myself and write it down because I'm angry that in the moment I couldn't think, okay, what are the benefits from yeah. the Joe Schmo who's saying, why would this help me? But obviously we know but sometimes it's hard yeah. to regurgitate it uh, out, but those were three right off the bat. Would be one thing, focus, and uh, we talked about one of those. Yeah. I forgot already. Well, I mean, like, if you will have, like, you will attain, like, clear, you will in, attain clarity, mm -hmm. you will have focus, mm -hmm. um, and you will have, like, a deeper sense of self and self-awareness. Right. Right. I keep in mind, this is a this is a tool and this is yours, so how much you sharpen it is most important. Yeah. You, I mean, just to, to correct you a little bit, when you obtain clarity, yes, you obtain clarity, that doesn't mean you're, you have for the rest of your life and you don't have to do anything oh, ever. Yeah, no. Again, it's a, it's a, there's nothing in the it's world like that. It's use a muscle. It or lose it. But, but guess what? I got good news for you. The more you use it, uh, the sharper that clarity yeah. is going to be. So uh, that's life. Yeah. I usually shake somebody's hand, but I'll do a, I'll do a, oh, <laughs> are you going to do spin. a little, no, but I, I do want to do both. Thing. I do appreciate you taking the time yeah, to be so patient with me. Thank you. This was an amazing talk. This, this is why fun. I knew this was going to be so cool because yeah. I, I, I come off as the big ugly jock, but uh, underneath it all, I'm I'm more into than anyone, and uh, my family gets exhausted by that. So to be able to talk to somebody who I feel uh, understands that from and, and learning something new from each other was uh, was very cool. I, I think there's no doubt whoever's listening, whether you're completely you know. Um, don't think meditation is important or you do I think we, we gave major value yeah. to them uh, today yeah. Hopefully, we hope to hear from you yep. let us know how it goes cheers thank you guys so much okay. for watching I'll, I'll have this up uh, ASAP but I'm with Ritu and Roman and uh, we appreciate you guys watching cheers